everybody blue echo here we are going to do a full flight kind of wrapping up um some of the stuff we've talked about in the other videos in the h160 playlist here we are currently at kalispell <clears throat> montana so this is glacier park international airport and we are going to fly down to missoula and Take a look at some of the scenery down there. There'll be links for this livery and the scenery that we're looking at um, in the description of the video. But we're going to jump right in, go through the uh, normal procedures for the H160. And if you haven't uh, seen it yet, on the Discord, there's a pinned message. Uh, yours truly put together these... Um, normal procedure checklist images that got added into the tablet. So there's a download there if you're interested in those. It's available with uh, kind of dark mode here. And then there's one that's uh, a light background with dark text if you prefer that. So go check those out if you're interested. But let's jump up to the upper panel and we will turn on battery one, battery two, generator one, and generator two. We'll turn on our DC ground power unit, and I don't know what happened there. Let's see if we can get back to our normal view. Hmm, that was weird. Didn't want to go back. Uh, power up test is okay. All right, jumping back up top. Radio altimeter one and two, FMS one and two, and then we can do our audio, audio test. test. Looks like we're all good there. All right. So next on the list, pilot MFD message list, acknowledge, power up test is okay, EPU is connected, and engine one, engine two, say fail. That's fine. We haven't started them yet. FND page parameters, we want to make sure that our barometric pressure is set correctly. So 30.53 in the case for the weather conditions we're flying in today. Looks good. Uh, let's see. Everything else looks good. We're going to need to add some fuel in. So let me jump over and do that. Crew and payload. We'll take 100% fuel. And back to the checklist. Uh, heading and standby compass. So if you look on the um, standby compass, we're facing 210. We're facing 210 down here. So we're good there. Uh, next is lighting panel. So if we come down here to the back, anti-collision lights go on. Position lights go on. Emergency exits armed. Signs go on. And then uh, there was some question about this uh, butterfly switch for the landing lights. And this does not turn the landing lights on and off. That is a separate bind. Um, but uh, what this butterfly switch does is it actually prioritizes in the real aircraft between the um, pilot or co-pilot primary control. So. It, uh, who has priority for controlling the landing light. It is able to be turned on and off, and then you can actually steer it uh, if you need to. All right, jumping up to the front console. Floats are off. Wipers are off. It's nice and clear, and HTAS is currently set to on. Uh, rear console, center console. If we jump back over here, this is our weather radio we can switch this over to test and then it goes back to standby if we were let's see if we can show you here on the front panel on the nav d map weather says fail right now but uh, this test doesn't actually function unless you're up in the air so 
we can check that out once we get going. All right, BMS page. We want to check our parameters. So engine oil is good. We don't have any hydraulic or MGB pressure. And everything else looks like inlet barrier inlet barrier filters at 15%. That should be good. And then for payload. Let's see, we've got four people in the back. We'll say they weigh 600 for all of them with their uh, additional cargo. And then OEI rating selection, if you guys don't remember, under the autopilot tab, if you expand this, you can switch between OEI high and OEI low. And one engine inoperative uh, high is the default setting there. Coming back over to this one, ox pump goes on. Come back here, make sure that we've got full use of our cyclic pedals and collective. Making sure collective is down, pedals and cyclic are centered. We can come back up to the top, turn off our ox pump. We're on to page two. So we want to make sure the BMS is displayed on this tablet here. We're going to go to the overhead panel and we'll pick engine one or engine two and switch that over to idle. As this is coming up, we're watching for N1 and the output temperature to rise. Monitoring those, the rotor should be spinning at 25% or before 25% than it is. And once coming up, once this hits 50%, the starter will disengage. Switch over to idle. And then if we come back here and hit previous, we'll see our N2 is rising. Torque is rising. We've got hydraulic pressure. Our engine oil temperature is coming up. And we've got engine oil pressure. MGB will slowly start to rise right now. It's a little bit low, but we'll keep an eye on that. And then NR should stabilize around 80%. Go back up top and start up engine two. Watching for the same thing. N1's rising. Once we get to 50%, the starter should disengage. We should see this come up to match. stabilizing around 80. Everything looks good there. Uh, at this point on the upper panel, we can disconnect the GPU. And then floats, if we needed them, we could uh, switch them over to auto at this point. We do not. Collective pitches at minimum cyclic and panels are hands off, feet off. And we want to double check our autopilot control panel. Make sure that we have all of those lights extinguished. Checking our fast cut, first press turns off AP1 and AP2, second turns off backup, coming back up to turn them all on, we're all good. Coming up top, pre-flight test. Come back down here and watch that. Startup test is okay, pre-flight test is running, once that's okay, we can switch that back off, and then we should be good to go. All right, pre-flight test is okay. The switch is coming back to the middle. And we should be good to taxi. So engine one and engine two, we're gonna switch those over to flight. We should see these messages go away once that comes up. Switch this over to our nav map. Leave the MS up here so we can monitor those. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to come in here and we need to set our destination. AMSO is where we're going. 
that should get us what we need. And we're good. Nose wheel, we'll make sure that this is free. We can turn our parking brake off. Setting up some uh, views and got it adjusted a little bit outside of where I want it. So at this point, we can begin our taxi. Switch the next turn. So to begin taxiing, it's just a little bit of collective. Adjust your speed by adjusting how much collective you have input. To stop when you're taxiing, your collective goes down. You can apply pedals uh, to steer yourself and then brakes if you need to as well. Before takeoff, make sure our flight performance is computed. Parking brake as required. AFCS upper modes, we can set those or prep them if we need to. Transponder, parametric pressure, altitude. We'll engage the transponder here. Message list. We are all good there. So, assuming we get clearance from the taxiway here, we'll stop ourselves. We will throw that parking brake on. ourselves up into a little hover here about six feet off the ground got trim release held in so that we can have control over Raise the collective, pitch down a little bit. We're increasing our speed to VY. Alright, pass in VY. Continue to get this more collective. Start to bring ourselves up. We are pretty heavy right now, so we've got full fuel and uh, full pack. So, one thing I forgot, wheels need to come up and help with our aerodynamics a little bit. So I do have my follow-up trim set to hover. So any of the in-flight stuff, I'm still actually holding trim release right now while we're flying out here. Once we get up to somewhat of a straightened level, we will engage our altitude hold, our indicated airspeed hold, and our heading hold. 
I am going to bump up the altitude. We're going to cruise about 8,000. So I'm going to continue to push this up. Our speed bug is set at 120. We'll leave it there for now because we're going to need that extra. Actually, we probably have to pull that back some since we're climbing with our weight the way that it is. So I'm going to bring us back to about 100 and continue our alt A setting up to about 8,500 probably. So if we come back over here, if we hit, oh, we lost our boat, didn't we? I just switched us over to vertical speed. can hit that. Now we're in vertical speed mode with Alte. Set and we'll continue climbing now. And I think at this point we'll switch over to nav mode. We did overfly our uh, course a little bit while I was finagling with that. But I uh, wanted to show you guys on the weather radio here. Uh, we went to standby mode, but if you turn on test mode while this is active, you can actually see the bands for the weather test. And then we can switch that to on. Don't really expect us to have anything because we've got a nice clear day here. Four has our climb level flight, which level flight is just making sure that your upper modes are set as required, making sure you're checking or adjusting your parametric pressure if you need to, fuel quantity check grid there, and navigation and radios as required. So now we switched from Alt A over to altitude. BS mode switched off because we got within a couple of hundred feet of our bugged altitude. Now this alt is in the altitude hold at, I guess, 8,500, 8,550. And at this point, we've got a little bit of power in reserve, so we can crank our speed up now. And if you see, like when you're uh, when you're trying to accelerate and, and adjust your indicated airspeed, it'll prioritize your airspeed over your altitude right now. So if you're a little too aggressive with your speed, uh, adjusting your speed up from where you're at, you know, take it in blocks or chunks so that you don't uh, lose too much altitude in the process because it'll get you up to that speed but you might burn off a bunch of your altitude in the process
If we take a look at the map here, where we're headed to, and we actually pull up our terrain. We're sitting good with our altitude right now, but as we get closer, we may have to climb a little bit more before we get down to Missoula. Actually, we're all right. Altitude-wise, there's a, a mountain range that's right up here that the reason that these two lanes are set up this way is because there's a set of hills that are on this side and on this side as well, and another range behind it, so. So that's about 20 minutes, 21 minutes or so of our uh, initial departure from Kalispell Glacier Park International Airport. And uh, assuming nothing else noteworthy happens during the flight, we'll, uh, we'll pick up when we get back to, uh, or when we start our approach to Missoula. See you in a minute. All right, we are just crossing over a set of hills here. Um, altitude, we're climbing up to about 9,000. We've reduced our speed down to 130. And we're about to make the left-hand turn into the ILS approach for KMSO. So uh, once we get past this range here and we pick up probably about the time we get to the user waypoint or gel egg, we'll, um, we'll switch over to the ILS. I've got the approach loaded in here and our frequency is ready. Uh, we can actually switch that over right now. We should start picking it up fairly soon. But we're cruising about 9,000, just picked up that next waypoint and then be another left hand turn. We should be able to pick up the ILS at that point. sure if we're receiving yet, but let's see if we can pick up anything on so don't think we actually have it yet. I don't see an option to couple with it. When we do, we should see the localizer show up here, and then this will say GS. Oh, there. Clicking couple and or 
decouple and couple again. Looks like we've picked it up. So we've got the localizer and it looks like our altitude is locked in as well. So we're going to continue this ILS approach in and it should start us on our descent here. Once we get a little closer, we'll slow our speed up. Um, so we're in the descent. No smoking signs can be turned on if required. They're on anyways. Uh, we'll double check our barometric pressure. So altimeter is good. Once we get a little bit closer, we'll go, uh, well, we can get everything else set. So nose wheels unlocked, we'll take the parking brake off. We aren't, are not going to put our landing gear down yet, but as we start to come in a little bit closer here, you can see off in the distance, you can see the runway lights blinking up there. So we're still a good distance away, about 16 miles. A couple miles out, we'll flip our landing lights on and get our gear down. All right, we are 6.2 miles out. Go ahead and get our landing lights on. And then um, we're gonna start to slow up a little bit. I'm gonna use our indicated airspeed hold to slow us down some. Just let this continue to, let the upper modes do the work for us, but we'll continue to slow up and start going through our before landing checklist so uh, let's see we're below 120 we can go here down our nose wheel is unlocked parking brake is off we've checked our altimeter landing lights on signs are illuminated and anti-collision lights are still on so we're going to be doing the level surface landing and Kind of zoom in a little bit. You guys might be able to read that. But uh, indicated airspeed about 50 knots. Rate of descent about 500 feet per minute. When at 50 feet, reduce your indicated airspeed continuously. And then set your attitude to stop the helicopter. Hover at 6 feet. And reduce your collective until you're touched down on the ground. So we're about 500 feet off the ground right now. I'm actually going to disengage those upper modes and take over manual control of the helicopter. Started to climb a little bit, so I'm gonna reduce collective. Start burning off some speed as we come down here. It's a nice clear day and we can see everything right now, but it's kind of nice to be able to fly reduced visibility flights with IFR approaches. still need a key bind to mute that. And we're actually going to overshoot the crossing runway because I want to... Actually, I can't remember if it's on the set or not. Might be on the 
the side. Let's um let's get ourselves in a hover here and taxi over because the scenery addition for this airport that I wanted to show you guys is possibly on this side over here, so here and see if we can spot it. Well, that's kind of anticlimactic. I think the scenery maybe didn't load. There's supposed to be set of landing pads over here. Oh, there they are on this side. So I was right. It was on the other side there. But uh, right over here by the terminal, there's a couple extra landing pads as we come in and set down. We'll land here. We'll wrap that up. But... Gears down, brakes are off. Parking brake is off, so you inch up a little bit here and we'll try and put down right on the H. Still getting used to flying not in VR. Most of the time when I fly, I'm in VR all the time. So we'll start our shutdown checklist. I'm not going to go through that whole thing, but uh, we'll come over here. Parking brake goes on. We've got engines to idle. Collective is at minimum. Cyclic and pedals are centered. And then engine one and engine two we've already set. We turn off our floats, our radar altimeter. switches can all go off. Emergency generator can go off as well. Once uh, this has had 30 seconds to cool down, we would switch the engines over to off and let them uh, spool down. You can do rotor brake once they get below 50% on this gauge here. But that's going to do it. I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, please take a look down in the description. The scenery uh, link and this livery link will be in there. There's also links to my socials. It's got my Twitch, my TikTok, my Twitter, everything. Uh, if you guys haven't already and you stuck around this long, make sure you click that subscribe button, drop me a like, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. We'll see you guys next time.